Hanifa Nayo Washington, she, her, hers, is a social entrepreneur, cultural producer, and healing justice practitioner with 20 years in nonprofit leadership. Hanifa is a facilitator, Reiki master practitioner, and creative, working at the intersection of mindfulness, placemaking, and social justice to create organizations, gatherings, spaces, and experiences rooted in the value of beloved community. As the co-founder and chief strategist for Fireside Project, Hanifa supports the design, facilitation, and communication of Fireside Project's mission, vision, strategic initiatives, and future goals. Hanifa Nayo is also the co-founder and organizing principal of One Village Healing, an online BIPOC-centered healing, resilience, and psychedelic wellness space, and is in her fourth year as a lead facilitator of the New Haven Community Leadership Program, whose mission is to equip, support, and inspire the practice of values-based collaborative leadership. Joining us today is Hanifa Nayo Washington from the Fireside Project. Welcome, Hanifa. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm so happy that I could jump in today with you. We are honored to share space with you. Um, I want to jump right in because I know that you have such a range of incredible experiences and insights, so I, I want to uh, get right to it. Um, I'm borrowing a question uh, from Prentice Hemphill, who runs the Finding Our Way podcast, which I uh, am a big fan of. And I want to ask you, how would you describe um, where we are at in this moment in psychedelics? Um, when you look around, what do you see? Um, what's most alive for you? Mm, I love this. I love this question. I, I think that we are, you know, really in an, an explosive place, as well as um, a place of, of a lot of curiosity and possibility. Um, I think there's wonderful opportunities for there to be an ex uh, extreme amount of, of bridge building and development. Um, so I see these different you know, bubbles and sectors popping up in one might, what one might call the psychedelic ecosystem. And so um, I think that uh, it's really interesting how collaboration and partnerships can be happening across these um, different sectors and, and bubbles. When, you know, I think about psychedelic re risk reduction, I think about education, I think about research, I think about, um, you know, the actual care and application of medicine and treatment. Um, and I also think about the traditions, right, but by which many of these medicines um, come from and the people who held and hold those traditions and how bridge building is important and reciprocity is important. And so I see in, in this time right now, just this incredible potential, incredible potential to get it right and potentially to get it wrong. Um, so I definitely see um, um, also many people coming together to bring different expertise um, to, to the table and say, how can we do this well? So there's a lot of collaborative conversations happening. Um, there's a lot of visioning also happening at this time and, and sort of this building up. Um, and it feels really special and enlivening to be, you know, a part of it. Thank you so much. I really loved the way um, that you framed that, you know, that there's so there's so much potential in this moment. There's potential to get it right. There's potential to get it wrong. It's like all this kinetic energy is starting to build up or potential energy and it's about to move. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to get to ask you a little more about how some of that energy is moving at Fireside Project. So you are the co-founder and chief strategist for the Fireside Project, which for folks who are watching, Fireside helps people to minimize the risks and fulfill the potential of their psychedelic experience by providing compassionate peer support. And I would love to hear more about why and how did you create Fireside Project? Um, thank you. I, I love being able to dive into this this question. And, um, you know, I'm a co-founder. And so this was a, a vision um, that came to the founder, you know, Joshua White. And we actually met um, about a year and a half before we met up again around this concept that became Fireside Project. We met at Burning Man in 2019. And um, a year later or so, we we came back in contact with each other um, and began to think about this concept, um, um, which was around 
how do we provide sort of care um, in the psychedelic space for people who are actively in an, a psychedelic experiences? How do we provide care for people afterwards? And how do we do this for free? How do we give access to as many people as possible? How do we create equity and beloved community and safety for all people? Um, and I come from a background of wellness and healing, um, community organizing, nonprofit development, and um, and, and healing. I'm a Reiki master practitioner. I also started a project in 2019 that's called One Village Healing that's really about um, providing space for healing and wellness for BIPOC folks. It's a BIPOC-centered space. It's now all online um, because of the magic of, of the pandemic. Um, so I have this deep reverence around healing spaces, around access to healing spaces that um, it should be available and free uh, to as many people as possible, and particularly to those who are most impacted by systems of oppression historically and currently. Um, and Josh, Joshua White, he comes from a background as a lawyer, uh, but also worked um, on a support line for many years in San Francisco. Um, and is a deep, deep, what he would call a uh, psychedelic research nerd. And I'm using the words that he uses, so I'm not talking behind his back. Um, and so when we were kind of thinking about this concept and he um, was, when we were just deep in the process of thinking about what it could be and how it could work, we just realized that we also just work really well together and have such different uh, approaches and super skills, right? Um, superpowers. And so we're able really to bring that together to to create a, this amazing space that's literally founded in the idea of beloved community and in conscious co-creation and equity. And that also, you know, upholds the importance of the practice of vigorous research, as well as providing peer support to people who can be in really vulnerable states um, and ensuring that it's free and accessible um, to, to everyone. That's, that's deeply powerful to, to bring both the care and the accessibility front and center. I think um, as with so many things in, in a space that is becoming rapidly commercialized, people you know hide behind values of care often, but are not truly living those by making them available to more people um, and thinking about how they'll be received by the people for whom they are available to. Um, you know, I think this is moving me into our, another, our next question, but um, I, I learned through researching for our conversation, the Fireside holds these deep core values around uh, equity building, power sharing, creating belonging in the psychedelic movement. And I know when we look at the field more broadly, we see um, a, a field that is in many ways controlled and shaped as so many things are by white supremacy, by extractive capitalism, by cis heteropatriarchy. Um, and I know that Fireside is working hard to center a different vision, a different way of being in healing spaces. And I wonder if you could share more about how those values uh, are alive in, in the work and in the space that you uh, hold and create with Fireside. Mm, love this. So when we think about peer support, right? What, what is peer support? Literally, it's a people to people practice. So it's setting aside whatever our credentials might be or whatever sort of our, um, our, our place, right? Within the, the system of capitalism and um, within any of these systems that ultimately are, can lead to oppression, systems of oppression. It's saying and empowering people and um, highlighting, right? That we as individuals and as, as humans and friends, um, as neighbors, um, as family members, as dear ones have a lot of power and we can use that collectively to support each other. And so the peer experience and the peer support experience to me is like primary to that mission in action, right? And so it's bringing people together with people who um, not necessarily will understand what it is to like have a, a psychedelic experience or to be in a space of needing um, holding as we integrate, but there's empathy right there, and there is <clears throat> there is a, a relation that can happen relating to one another, um, and it's also this grand gesture of, you know, we think about like loving that neighbor. This is like it, it's it's doing it. It's saying I'm going to volunteer my time for a year, 
four hours every week as a support line volunteer and hold this space um, because we know that it um, can really be clutch and important in someone's psychedelic experience. We know that it can save lives. We know the importance of, of, a, of a peer um, and feeling a part of something and being a part of a beloved community. I also feel that as we have, are moving into 2022, we are actually this, this week have launched our, what we're calling our equity initiative. And this is really moving to the, sort of the next step of, okay, we've established a support line. We've been open, you know, since April of uh, last year. Uh, we've received over 1,800 calls on the support line so far um, and more to come. And from the very beginning, we thought and really wanted to think about how we could offer more choice <clears throat> within the experience for our support line callers. So we know that offering choice and having choice is about sharing power. It's about understanding that there are differences that need to be honored. And uh, I think in the, you know, the, the medical models, there's often, you know, someone is <clears throat> diagnosed and then sort of told what their care plan is going to be. Uh, and, and what is it to offer choice to someone in a healing space and in a, um, with giving them the choice to be a part of that healing plan. And so I think for us, um, moving into our equity initiative, we are beginning to answer that. And um, we are launching our affinity peer support volunteer positions um, that will start in June of this year. So the service um, is the affinity peer uh, support service. And so what this is, is that um, first, uh, we're focusing on these different affinity groups. And this year, we are focused on, on BIPOC communities, um, military veterans, and transgender um, people. And so we are going to train them to be on the peer support line um, with all the skills. They do a four-day training. Um, and then they'll be on call. So every week, they'll have a shift that they're on call for. Um, and we will announce to the world in very amazing marketing and outreach uh, uh, methodologies that the service exists. So you'll be able to call the line uh, or text the line on Thursdays, Fridays, or Saturdays from 3 to 7 Pacific time. And if you so desire to integrate uh, or have an integration call with someone who shares that part of your identity, if you're BIPOC, if you're a military veteran, if you're transgender, you have, you'll have have that opportunity. Um, and so we know that representation matters. And we know that choice matters. Um, and sometimes really getting deeper into what that choice looks like can support and create more safety um, and opportunity for healing. Um, and so we're going to bring on about 40 volunteers uh, to, to launch this initiative. And we think that it's important to not only provide our caller's choice, but also to deepen the pathways into the psychedelic space for uh, folks who come from these communities. Um, we know that they're underrepresented and underserved within the psychedelic space. So we are, um, as a part of our equity initiative, also launching the Fireside Equity Fund. And so this is a fund for our volunteers who come from marginalized communities and underrepresented communities to apply for grants and direct funding to support their advancement within the psychedelic space. Um, so that can go toward education, but it also can go toward uh, business development and any sort of um, professional development um, um, that folks need support for to establish themselves and to be trained, um, as well as we're, we are collaborating with uh, educational organizations and training organizations like Naropa University and MAPS and Fluence and Psychedelic.Support um, to offer, you know, low cost and or, you know, full scholarships to training programs um, that are focused on, you know, psychedelic um, in the psychedelic fields. Uh, as well as um, being able to work with some amazing researchers and clinicians in the field to offer um, internship opportunities for uh, our what, what would be called fireside fellows. So after they sort of graduate from on the line um, to be placed um, in an internship with, you know, we were working with Robin Carhar Harris at the University of uh, California, San Francisco at his lab, as well as working with uh, Chris Stoffer and um, Dr. Monica 
uh, T. Williams as well so far. And I think that list is just going to keep growing. And it's been amazing to see how the psychedelic community, um, leaders of these organizations are responding to this invitation to create these pathways in. And so we really believe that over generations, as people move through this program, um, we're going to help to seed and help to deepen um, the spaces um, for folks to get rooted uh, and flourish in the psychedelic fields and also then be able to attract and work with more people from those communities to actually, you know, receive um, the, the healing would also and also be a part of the research and also be a part of uh, the policy making and, and whatnot. So this is part of our, our larger vision of really creating um, a psychedelic community that is equitable and safe and beloved. Wow, I, uh, it took me a minute to jump back to the screen because I'm just over here like clapping and snapping. This is, um, you know, I, I one of the things I admire so much about Fireside is um, just being able to offer peer support in an accessible way to people all over. But far more than that, you know, jumping into that opportunity to say, hey, this is needed, let's do it. There is also this deep, deep work of operationalizing these values and creating pathways that build community, that build path and community into the future for BIPOC folks and folks of all identities who are who have been a part of this work ancestrally sh are so needed should and must be centered in it now and Fireside and your team are jumping in to make this possible and I just am so grateful that um, you, you're setting a model that others can follow and I think there's just so much to celebrate in that and I'm very glad um, that we get to watch it unfold. Um, yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and I'll just add that um, also, like this is the beginning of this initiative. We definitely see things in sort of steps. And so we're gonna see, you know, how, how does it play out? Does this really truly increase our call volume um, from folks from these communities? Uh, how many people take the opportunity to, to root and, and move forward in the psychedelic space? And also what other uh, communities can we begin to, to train as well and pull into the affinity space? So by no means do we also think that people live in a vacuum and have no intersectionality to their identity. So I just wanna name that um, and that we're gonna also sort of grow what those affinity groups are as we move into the future. Wow, that's that's so exciting. And I really love that the space grows and then there's these kind of rhizomal links to more opportunities to go deeper, to intern, to learn alongside others. My cilia one might even say. <laughs> <gasps> even better. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I also would love to ask you a little bit about um, One Village Healing that you are a co-founder of. Um, for folks watching, One Village Healing is a place-based wellness and resilience initiative, creating spaces, gatherings, and programming rooted in the values of the healing justice movement. Um, when I was learning more about One Village Healing, I see that some of the core values are being rooted in anti-oppression and pro-liberation practice, which to me feels so deeply needed in the psychedelic movement. And I'm wondering if you would be willing to share more with us about what healing justice is um, and what we need to learn from, from this um, within psychedelics. Yes, I think that there's a great um, correlation and, and mirroring um, almost like a braiding between what peer support is and what healing justice is. Um, and one might say that peer support is a, is a part of what healing justice is and one might say that healing justice is a part of what peer support is, but what it boils down to, Jen, is that it is, you know, individuals, the people um, saying we actually have the power to support our individual and collective healing and that we um, are not going to, to um, sort of give that power up or forget about that power in lieu of other systems um, that have been created to care for us uh, and to place our healing um, centrally and first. And so healing justice is a, is a, a direct response to right systems of oppression um, in the certainly in the medical model, um, but just societally. So these practices come from, you know, you know, the this in terms of the black community and African American community, deep 
you know, in, in the South and for ages, uh, you know, there's, you know, Bushwomen and people doing medicine in their kitchen and providing, you know, um, apothecary um, that wasn't, you know, clinicalized um, or, or systemized. And so it is not necessarily about ignoring um, Western medicine and um, all that it can offer, but it's about remembering the collective power of the, of the individuals and, and communities within our our healing, and that healing is a birthright, and that all should have access. So, I would say that healing justice centers access. It centers people power, um, and it also centers remembering your individual uh, power and responsibility to your healing journey and, and practice. Um, and so, when we were founding One Village, it really came out of the absence of um, something like this existing in our community. So, you know, where could I go in New Haven um, that was mul multicultural, at least, um, and that were the practitioners of the yoga classes or the meditation classes or the talk groups were people who looked like me or who I could identify with, and there weren't any. Um, and so there's something really significant about being in a vulnerable place of healing, like being in a breathwork session or being in a yoga session or being in a talk group where there's affinity um, and your culture is represented. And so we brought a bunch of people together. Just a, we had a what we call it, I call the Super Friends dinner, um, and said, "Hey, we wanna we wanna try this. We wanna create this space because we need it." Um, and we think that maybe you might need it too. And we had an overwhelming response, a uh, positive response. Um, and uh, a few of us came together to be the sort of founding practitioners. Um, and we opened up a physical space um, in downtown New Haven. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you wanna look at it, you know, we celebrated our anniversary in, in lockdown <laughs> because COVID, we opened up that project, started in April. Um, of 2019 and by april 2020 we were in full covid um um you know times <laughs> um but in any case the the project continued on so we are online now um offering sessions pretty regularly there's at least four or five regular sessions each week and then we sometimes bring in other practitioners or have other events and the thing is is that it's free and so folks don't have to pay it is something that um, you, there are particular sessions that are affinity based. There are some sessions that are open to the whole community, all people. Um, and we really have this belief that like every day is as much as possible, we are offering a place of release, uh, a place of clearing, a place of laying down the burdens of the day, because we know that that matters in our resilience in this world and that we must have practices and spaces where we can we can rest um, collectively and be seen um, and you know transmute the poisons um, and without those spaces our resilience weakens and our ability to hold the work of change weakens and so we believe in creating these spaces so that we can um, you know maintain our strength in this journey that's so so beautiful transmute poisons learning to rest that is uh so much of what's needed for this work i think not only to to grow but to really move from an authentic space for people to really be able to be truly part of the work that's happening i'm grateful that you are holding space in so many different ways to make this healing possible for for others um i would love to um move us towards towards one final check-in around Fireside Project. Um, mm -hmm. I know that it is you know, more than a peer support line and we've heard a bit about some of the really incredible uh, peer support that's available now and that's developing with the uh, affinity projects. But I know the Fireside also offers public education mm -hmm. in psychedelics um, and is doing some data-driven research around psychedelic healing. I wonder if you could share a little more about those projects and also um, about how people can can get involved if they would like to. Absolutely. So yes, this year we're going to be um, really building out our public education um, offerings. So we're starting to to offer these things with some regularity and intention. And so we have uh, 
uh, some things in the works that we're not quite like releasing yet, but there'll be a one day and a two day public training that we're offering on, um, you know, how to, how to be, you know, a good psychedelic citizen. Um, and what does that look like? What are sort of the essentials? And it is very like experiential. So there'll be a lot of like practicing and um, discussion. And um, we just really feel like as many people as possible who have these basic skills, the better. And so we don't see this as like a competition or again, like replacing emergency services or anything like that. But just as we're sort of all encouraged to learn CPR, because you never know when that skill might come in handy to save a life, we feel concurrently about, you know, being a psychedelic citizen and having the skills to, you know, support and hold space for people during and after their psychedelic experiences. Um, and with more and more folks engaging in the practice uh, or finding these medicines and, and substances, we just feel like it's important that people who are very new to psychedelics, who don't know anything about it, to those who are veterans, um, have, have and share these basic skills of support. Um, so we'll be having more, it, we'll be talking more about that and launching it um, um, more toward the second half of the year. We want to make sure that the work we're doing is impactful and true to our mission um, and then to be able to share um, that with the world as well. And so from the very beginning of this project, you know, part of our, our mission is about culturally attuned peer support. It is about public education as well as research. And so we um, have been working with um, Dr. Joe Zavaria uh, out at, again, at the University of California in San Francisco um, to do a, uh, a, a study around the effectiveness of the peer support line um, as a risk reduction tool. And we are right in the sort of the beginning phases of uh, writing the report for that and um, having it published. And so we have amazing findings. What we do, is that after each call or text on the line, we send um, the caller or texter a, a survey and say, you know, how do we do? What did you notice? Um, can you please take a few minutes to fill out this survey? We have a, anywhere about, about a 25%, 30% uh, response rate to the um, post-call surveys, which is great. And so from that, we've been able to pull this data um, that's gonna be shared in this report um, fairly soon. And so what we're noticing is that, you know, we can say um, that about 60% of our calls are people actually integrating. So folks processing a trip from previous, um, about a little less than 30% are folks who are calling when they're actively, actively engaged in a psychedelic experience. We also know from this that 92% um, of the folks who have filled out the survey say they felt seen and supported. Um, that they felt, you know, that we were able to, 60% uh, are saying that they felt, you know, de-escalated um, from, um, from the service and the time. We also know that we are diverting people from unnecessarily calling 911 or going to the emergency room. So folks who fill out the survey, again, about 30% are saying that they would have called 911 or gone to the to the ER if it wasn't for Fireside. So we know um, that the findings of this initial study definitely point in the direction that um, this service and our intention and our mission is is doing what it's set out to do. That it is having impact. That it is saving lives. Um, that it is saving tax dollars. Right. That it is um, making people feel seen and heard and connected. Um, and so we will also be launching our um, sort of impact report for our first full year, also sometime in like late spring. Um, so that'll be coming out for people to have a fuller uh, understanding of some of the research and the data that's come out of this project so far. That is so exciting to learn more about the impact. And I'm uh, really grateful to hear that so many people are coming with the intention of integrating. I feel like that message has been reaching more and more people that, you know, beyond just the medicine, it's really how do you connect with and process and metabolize the experience afterward? And I'm so grateful Fireside has an opportunity for folks to process things that may be difficult, things that may be very beautiful, things that are both. Um, yes and making that, that uh, normalizing that part of the healing process, the integration and the longevity of, of the lessons from the experience. Wow. Absolutely. 
Um, if folks would like to get more connected, um, I'm going to show the website. Is is this the best place? Is this also where they could find the impact report a bit later in the year? Yeah. So yeah, firesideproject.org is the place to, to, to check everything out on all things Fireside. Um, I also suggest that people to, to join our mailing list because we do send out a monthly bulletin. And so it has all of the updates of what's happening internally, if we're hiring, you know, when when certain initiatives are kicking off and just uh, news about the project. So, um, and then also to follow us on social media, um, mm -hmm. Fireside, just, yeah, just find Fireside Project, um, both, uh, we're all, not both, but we're on Twitter. We actually just have launched our TikTok account. So you can check us out there as well, uh, as well as Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Oh, wonderful. And we'll make sure to link to those in the blog that accompanies this interview for anyone who's watching. Um, so we'll have all of those uh, below for folks to get access to as well. Awesome. This is so wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Hanifa. I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much, Jen. This was really, really wonderful. And um, yeah, I'm there's not, I could talk about Fireside. <laughs> I could talk about Fireside all day. And I'm, I'm just really pleased to be at this point in, in the in the project and um, yeah, looking forward to, you know, this next cohort coming on and really um, just continuing onward and upward. So thank you so much for this. So much exciting growth. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.